All right, guys, just want to share uh, another face clinch headlock technique from the NACA system. So we've added more clinch work to the FSW University. So we continue to expand the NACA training system on there. If you want to check some of this stuff out in more detail for more options, right? So in this case, we're just going to show um, one of the face clinches, which is similar to a headlock, but we're going to clinch the face versus attacking the neck. We're not going to attack the neck from a strangulation or circula uh, circulation restriction standpoint. We're actually going to attack the neck by body position, and then we're going to do pain compliance uh, by clinching the face. And I'll show you how that works real quick. But with that, as always, there's always counters to counters to counters. So this isn't the one way, and there's obviously things he can do, but for the things that he can do, there's obviously things that I can do. But just to give a baseline of this clinch. And again, on the university, we'll get into the much more detailed version of this. But so in this case, what we can find ourselves in, so if he backs up just one step. So if uh, he goes to shoot in and I find myself in this position and I frame, okay? So I'm doing this framing strike, which we would call the cut, okay? And as I get into here and he goes to come in, maybe I catch that lead arm. So we'll back up real quick. So I'm catching that lead arm with the initial frame, like, oh crap, right? And as I get to here, I may shift and frame with the other arm, the one that's back. So this one will probably catch first because it's the lead. So I frame, I frame again. When I do the second frame, the left, the lead arm is going to stab through across, right? Like I'm going to try to do uh, the headlock, right? But I'm not going to slide through. It's going to be a stab where I'm actually punching through. Okay. Uh, so we'll come back in one more time. So he goes to shoot, I frame, frame, and then this is going to stab through here. Boom, like this. Okay. So in this position, I'm getting over top. I'm leaning in. One, this helps me catch his head. So if he goes to stand up, I, I have his neck underneath my chest. The other thing is, by me being over top, if he were to shoot, I could sprawl and my weight's on top of him to go down. The other thing is, it's me leaning in and getting into this position. It's helping me not get thrown backwards, right? So we'll come back into this one more time. So he comes into here, boom, my catch. And this is stabbing through, right? When this stabs through, I turn his head, right? I'm not going across his neck, I'm going across his face. So this is turning his head sideways. See how he's looking at you? Okay, from this standpoint, I'm in tight. My head is in tight so that it's hard for him to hit me and I'm catching that head. This hand, our hook hand, is going to come in and I'm going to keep it in tight across his face and I find my wrist bone. My thumb is pointed up so the bone in my arm is against his face tissue. I don't want to go like this to where the flat part is. I want the bone to be in. So in here, right, this comes in and then painful, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just tap when you feel it. Okay, so very quick response, right, for the pain compliance. So there's two things that are happening. His neck is being bent and his head is being turned. So this puts a lot of stress on the spine. So that's what I was saying. We have the structure compromise of the neck. The second thing is I'm locking it in with the pain of crushing his face between my two wrist bones, right? And it's, he's a big dude. It's pretty uncomfortable. Yeah, that hurt. Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> it sucks, right? So in that position, we have options, obviously, right? And there's things he can do, and I can also move my, as well, right? So we'll come back in. We'll just go slowly so they can see it one more time. So I'm here, boom, I get to this, stabs through, I'm in tight, this comes in, okay? And if he goes to step this way, I can just roll with him, okay? Okay, so I can move him, okay? I can sprawl out. It's hard for him to get control of the legs because if he goes to drive in, I just lift and it makes it really uncomfortable. So as he tries to pull on those legs, I just lift up, keep this in tight, and it's very uncomfortable for him. And he outweighs me by about 60 pounds, okay? So if I want to come out of this, again, one of the things to consider um, for street fighting purposes, like, like really bad purposes, 
One of the things I can do is I can yank side to side or up really fast in a jerking motion. If I want to transition out of this, another thing is maybe he's really strong and he starts to turn and he comes up and he somehow he starts to wiggle his way up. As he comes into here, I can transition into the other face clinch that we've showed you previously. So we'll come back. So as I'm here, basically I can lift this up, pull him and come back in, right? And bring him into this face clinch here, okay? And then from that, I'm leaning against the wall, but yep, this one's nasty as well. So in that position, boom, it comes up. I come back with that face clinch, catch, elbow drops and crushes in. But that, again, is in more detail on the website. But um, yeah, just one little technique that's really nasty, really effective uh, and works well with different wrestlers. It can work well with law enforcement maybe who is not allowed to touch the neck anymore. This, we don't touch the neck. We're doing a face clinch, we're doing structure control and uh, pain compliance. So just a little tip, if you want, check out the, uh, the university and you get more access to other techniques. Hopefully that helps. Give it a shot, let us know what you think.